God morning, everyone. It is time to go deeper into Matthew chapter 22. If you watched yesterday's video, you know what we're talking about. If you didn't, I don't know if you'll know. And I decided to start writing down my notes. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I decided. I don't want to come off the cuff anymore. All right, we have uh, Jesus explaining the wedding banquet. He said, hey, we got a banquet. Come on, let's go. And then when it was ready, the people that were invited wouldn't come. So he told the servants, go out and invite anybody, anybody, the good, the bad. And uh, they weren't coming. So then he said, go back out and get the people on the streets. All right, the good, the bad, everything. Now, when, he's, when Jesus is talking about this, he's talking about the Jews who had the word of God. They, they had the experiences, the parting of the Red Sea, all that stuff. And now Jesus is here and he says, it's time for the wedding banquet. But they didn't want to come. Okay, so he said, go out and get anybody. Now, um, as Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like this. So here, there's a man there without wedding clothes on. So here, the man without wedding clothes is someone who heard about the wedding. We all hear about Christ. We all hear about the cross. We all hear about heaven. We all hear about hell. Some of us have not really sat down with someone to tell them, but people hear it. The Bible tells us that those that are born again will wear a wedding gown provided by God. And this man simply heard about the wedding and thought, yeah, I'll go to the wedding. Yeah. But he waited until the last minute and then he came unprepared. This will happen with many people that think they are followers of Christ. Jesus said, for many are invited, but few are chosen. In other portions of the Bible, it says, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, you know, didn't, didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we, you know, preach the gospel? You know, and he's going to say, I never knew you. Remember, the key is not that we know him. It's that he knows us and he will never be able to know us until we begin to want to know him. That's the long and the short of it. Um, then you have the one, the, the portion where the guy says, hey, look, Moses said that if a man marries a woman um, and, the, uh, yeah, and the man dies without having children, then the brother has to marry her to have his offspring. That's a lot to explain. But he would actually be having the off offspring for his dead brother so that the inheritance would still stay there with the woman. That was to protect the woman. Um, yeah, that's nice. Um, and they said, look, he had seven brothers. So the first one married her, he died, no children. Second one married her, he died, no children. And that went all the way down to the seventh. So then she finally dies. So at the resurrection, when we're all in heaven, whose wife is she? And Jesus said, Jesus said that, look, um, he says that we will, that in heaven, there is no marrying or giving in marriage. That's actually what he says. And he says, but we will be like the, you will be like the angels. We will be like the angels in heaven. And we will neither marry, we won't date, um, or live with our mate from earth. It does not say we will be come like angels and have wings and glow. We're not. And, and I've said this previously. If we became angels when we die and go to heaven, that's a demotion. We are created in the image of God above the angels. Uh, don't tell Michael or Gabriel that because I read that they're pretty tough. But we're created above them. So we need to quit thinking, oh, I'm going to be an angel and have wings. No, you're going to be a child of God, resurrected by the power of God, bought by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. No angel can get any of that. Okay, so then the, the last part is when they said, what's the greatest commandment, right? And he said, love the Lord your God with all your mind, uh, body, and soul, with your mind, soul, and heart. Every, it says it differently. Okay, says so we will go, you know, we're going to go deeper into this, which we are. I want to point out that many believers believe if they perform the second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself, then they are doing God's will. But if they do not love God with all their heart and soul and mind, they do not know God's will. 
Therefore, they're loving people with an imperfect heart. And this is why people get hurt. If you love God with your mind, body, and soul, one of the things is, is you are grateful for his salvation. If you're going to love your neighbor as yourself, you're going to let them know about this salvation and cut their grass if they need it and give them a sandwich if they need it. Remember, Jesus did not go out and just heal people or just say nice things or just talk about salvation. Jesus preached, repent. The kingdom of heaven is here. While he was doing that, he healed somebody. He preached, repent. The kingdom of heaven is here. While he was doing that, someone came up and said, I'm hungry. And he fed them. Okay? That's what we're called to do. So, and then again, at the bottom, you know, when, uh, when David said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. In the book of Revelation, that's what it's about. And remember, Revelation is not apocalypse. Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ in all his glory. And God says, Jesus' enemies will be made his footstool. So you want to see how proud the father is of the son and the power and authority the son gets. Read Revelation. You'll see it. Okay, <laughs> we're done there. You make a God-tastic day, everyone.